So you've decided to start playing Destiny 2. Whether you're a new player and you're diving into the game for the very first time, someone that may have played Destiny 1 but not Destiny 2, or you played Destiny 2 in the beginning and now you're coming back. Whichever one you are, welcome or welcome back. As someone that has put over 2,000 hours into this game from just the past year alone, I have learned quite a few things and in this video I'm going to touch on 5 things or tips that I believe every new or returning player should know. These tips are on the idea or basis that you've started the game, done a few missions, got some weapons and armor, killed some enemies, but you're still confused on some things and you're wondering if you're doing anything wrong. So sit back, grab a drink or some snacks and let's get started. So I want to quickly touch on expansions and DLCs in Destiny 2 just to bring anyone up to speed that may be a little confused. If you already know how the DLC structure within Destiny 2 works and you just want to hear the five things every new or returning player should know, then feel free to skip to the timestamp on screen. Destiny 2 originally released in 2017. Throughout the first year of Destiny 2, two DLCs were released. First was Curse of Osiris and second was Warmind. Everything that released during the first year is what Destiny players refer to now as year one. Then came the second year in 2018 where we saw the first big expansion, Forsaken. The Destiny franchise has always structured its DLC like this. The main game is released, a few small DLCs are released in the following months, then the following year a big expansion is released. Then repeat with a few small DLCs and the launch of another big expansion the following year. So after the big expansion Forsaken in 2018, we saw three DLCs that followed. Now when these three DLCs were announced, they were announced as normal DLCs, but later Bungie, the game developers, decided to restructure them as seasons. This was also at the same time that, dare I say the word Fortnite, was becoming extremely popular, and many games were starting to follow Fortnite's season-like DLC structure, and Destiny was one of those games that followed. The first DLC was known as Season of the Forge, the second Season of the Drifter, and the third Season of Opulence. Everything that I just mentioned that was released during that second year is now known as Year 2. Then came the third year, with the big expansion known as Shadowkeep in 2019. This is also when Bungie split with their publisher Activision and began self-publishing Destiny 2. Now with the release of Shadowkeep also came the release of New Light, which was a free-to-play version of Destiny 2. New Light in the grand scheme of things was just all of year one becoming free. Literally everything from year one became free to play. Then if you liked the game and wanted more loot to collect or more activities to do, then you could purchase the DLCs and the seasons. Now after the launch of Shadowkeep in 2019 came four seasons. Season of the Undying, which released alongside Shadowkeep, Season of Dawn, Season of the Worthy, and Season of Arrivals. Everything that I just mentioned that was released in that third year is now known as year three. Then in 2020, we had another big expansion, Beyond Light, and along with it, the first season of year four, Season of the Hunt, which is the current season we're in at the time of making this video. Okay, you caught up, good. So the first thing on this list is going to be how leveling within Destiny 2 works. There are three separate types of levels within Destiny 2. The first is power or light level, the second is season pass level, and the third is artifact level. Season pass and artifact leveling are much easier to explain, so let's start with that. With every new season, there is a new season pass and a new season artifact, but let's first start with the season pass. The season pass contains rewards at every tier or level. Leveling the season pass requires XP. If you've played literally any game ever, then you know what XP is and how it works. You do activities or complete certain objectives and you will be awarded with XP. It works just like that within Destiny 2. Activities such as missions, crucible matches, gambit matches, etc. award XP, which will go toward your season pass level. Now artifact leveling works the same. You get XP and you will increase your level. But unlike season pass levels, where you get a reward at every level, artifact levels are just levels that are added onto your character's power slash light level. More about power and light level in just a second. Now, one of the best ways to get XP and level your season pass and artifact is by completing bounties. Almost every vendor in the game will offer bounties. Bounties are just simple tasks that you can complete and when turned in, they will award you with XP and sometimes other loot. Now, one last thing about season pass and artifact levels is that they do reset at the end of every season. So now that you understand how artifact and season pass levels work, well now let's discuss the big one, power slash light level. And you may want to sit down, you know, maybe put the video at 0.5 times just so you can really soak in everything that I'm about to throw at you. In the grand scheme of things, it's actually not that complicated, but when I explain it, it's going to sound complicated. Okay, ready? Let's go. 
Power level is what makes you, well, powerful. The higher your power level is, the more damage you do to enemies in game while at the same time taking less damage. For example, if you go into an activity where the recommended power is 1200, but you are 1150, then you're going to be taking more damage from enemies and doing less damage to enemies at the same time, as opposed to if you went into that same mission at 1200 power. So now that you know what power level does, how do you increase your power level? To understand how increasing your power level works, you need to first understand three things. The soft cap, the hard cap, and the pinnacle cap. The soft cap is a level at which you no longer get higher level gear from just playing the game. For example, the soft cap currently is 1200, which means if you are 1150, you can do literally anything in the game and the game will keep awarding you weapons and armor that are a higher power level than your current items. So once you've hit the soft cap, your next goal should be to hit the hard cap. In order to start earning gear that is above the soft cap, you must start doing your powerfuls. Powerfuls are pretty much challenges that are given to you every week. And when you complete said challenge, you will be awarded a piece of gear that is five levels above your character's power level. Like I said, these challenges are given to you weekly and there are only a certain amount you can do per week. In order to see your powerful challenges or how many powerful rewards you have left for the week, just go to your directory or map and look for bright yellow icons. You can't miss them. Upon hovering over where you see a yellow icon, it will tell you whether it's a powerful or a pinnacle. We'll discuss pinnacles in just a second. Now here's where things get tricky. You are not guaranteed to get a powerful piece of gear that you need to progress your character's power level. For example, you just hit the soft cap of 1200. You do a powerful challenge and you get a helmet that's 1203, which is an upgrade to your previous helmet that was 1200. But you then realize that your character's power level is still 1200. This is because it takes eight, what I like to call gear levels to achieve a character power level. Getting back to the example, all your gear is 1200, except for that new helmet you just got that's 1203. But because those three extra gear levels on your helmet don't equal eight gear levels, your character's power level is still 1200 meaning the next powerful reward you get is still going to be 1203. At this point, you just have to hope that the next powerful reward you get is anything except a helmet, because if it is a helmet, then you're still in the same boat of needing another piece that is going to add on to those three gear levels to get you closer to eight gear levels for another power level. But on the flip side, if that second powerful reward you get is a kinetic weapon, well now you're only two gear levels away from achieving a character power level because you got three gear levels from both the new helmet you got and the new kinetic weapon you got. Three gear levels plus three gear levels equals six gear levels, meaning you only need one more powerful reward that isn't a helmet or kinetic weapon to achieve a character power level of 1201. When you finally do hit 1201, the next powerful reward you will get will be 1204 because powerful rewards are always three levels above your current character's power level. The best way to track how much gear level you need to achieve your next character power level is to go to a site called Destiny Item Manager and under your character's emblem, it will display your character power level plus your character's gear level. And it will also display your artifact level, which remember stacks on top of all of this so yeah it sounds a whole lot more confusing than what it actually is but trust me it's not that confusing the biggest grind for this game is getting from the soft cap to the hard cap getting to the soft cap is super easy getting to the hard cap is not super easy it's very very grindy so now let's discuss the pinnacle cap it's literally the same as the hard cap just more grindy as there are less pinnacle challenges per week compared to powerful challenges and pinnacle rewards are only two levels above your current character's power level compared to powerful rewards, which are five levels above your current character's power level. But pinnacles are the only rewards that can take you from 1250 to 1260. If you are 1250, all your gear is 1250 and you do another powerful, it's not going to drop at 1255. Okay. You have to do a pinnacle to continue progressing past 1250. Okay. The current pinnacle cap is 1260 and it is the highest that you can get your gear currently. And remember, on top of all this, your artifact level does stack. So if you go into the tower or anywhere in the game and you see someone that's 1275, well, more than likely they're 1260 pinnacle and they just have a 15 artifact bonus, okay? Or they just have 15 artifact levels, all right? I'm done talking about levels now. I've said levels probably a thousand times. Second on this list is going to be armor stats. Now I'm not going to sit here and explain what each stat does as when you hover over a certain stat, it will give you a description of what that particular stat does. 
Instead, I'm just going to tell you what stats you should stat into depending on if you play a Warlock, Titan, or Hunter. For Warlock, you should stat into Recovery because Recovery as a stat is probably the most useful in the entirety of the game, but also because Recovery is directly tied into Warlock's class ability. The higher Recovery, the faster you regain health, but also the faster that you get your Rift back. Another stat Warlock should stat into is Discipline for increased grenade recharge. Warlocks are very ability based and Warlock grenades, especially if you use Middle Tree Dawn Blade where the grenades can literally heal you, are very good. Now for Titans where you should stat into Resilience strictly for the increased recharge rate to your class ability, the Barricade. Just like Warlock's Rift's recharge rate being affected by the Recove stat, Titans Barricades are affected by the Resilience stat. The reason I emphasize strictly for the increased recharge rate to your class ability or your barricade is because resilience in Destiny 2 is pretty much entirely useless outside of PvP, where the max you should have is 6 just to survive certain 2-tap weapons. But inside PvE, resilience is pretty much useless. Now the other stat for Titans is recovery, and that's just because like I said earlier, it's probably the most useful stat in the game. It literally makes you regain health faster. Now for Hunters, where you should stat into Mobility for an increase to movement speed and jump height, but also for the increased recharge rate to your class ability, the Dodge. Once again, just like Warlock's class ability is being tied to Recovery, Titan's class ability is being tied to Resilience, Hunter's class ability is tied to Mobility. The higher your mobility, the faster you move and the higher you jump, but also the faster your dodge recharges. The other stat Hunter should stat into is Recovery, because once again, it's super useful. You've probably noticed that the top three stats should only be used if you're on the class that's ability is tied to that certain stat. Now the bottom three stats, Discipline, Intellect, and Strength, can be statted into any class if it goes along with your build. I'm not going to get into builds, but if you're curious as to why I didn't mention those other stats, it's because their usefulness depends upon your current build. Now the third tip is going to be how to correctly make a loadout. I feel like this is more of a PSA than a tip, but it needs to be said. You have three weapon slots. The top slot is your kinetic slot, the second slot is your energy slot, and the third slot is your power slot. When you choose what guns to use, you should always base it off this. Do I have a primary ammo weapon? And do I have a special ammo weapon? A lot of people believe that a primary ammo weapon can only be slotted into the kinetic slot, and a special ammo weapon can only be slotted into the energy slot. This is false. There are kinetic special weapons and energy primary weapons. In order to see which type of weapon you have, just simply hover over the weapon and it will tell you what type of weapon it is. The reason you should be using one of each and not double primary or double special is because of the following. Primary weapons are good for killing low tier adds and special weapons are good for killing majors and ultras. So if you go into an activity with two primary weapons, you're going to have a hard time taking on majors and ultras and you'll have to use your power weapon which could have been used on the boss. Now on the flip side, if you go in rocking two special weapons, well you're going to run out of ammo extremely quick thanks to special ammo weapon drops being pretty scarce. Now of course there are exceptions to this, but the general rule of thumb is one primary weapon for ad clear one special weapon for major or ultra clear, and then whatever power weapon of your choice for killing bosses. Now the fourth thing I'm going to touch on is explaining how exotics work. You've more than likely seen an exotic, and you might even have one yourself. You know, the gold stuff. Exotics are the highest tier of loot in the game that can be acquired. Let's start with exotic armor. Almost all exotic armor is acquired randomly by just doing activities. Like seriously, you'll just randomly get one. Some activities like Nightfalls have a higher chance of dropping them compared to, let's say, just a normal Crucible match. Now with the launch of Beyond Light, there are now special loss sectors that rotate daily and if cleared on a high difficulty while also being solo, you have a very high chance of obtaining an exotic piece of armor. And in fact, the new Beyond Light exotic armor can only drop from these loss sectors, cleared under the conditions I just mentioned. It is random whether you get an old piece of exotic armor or a new piece, but hey, that's the best way to go about getting them if you're trying to collect them all. Now onto exotic weapons, where things are a little bit more complicated. Some exotic weapons can be acquired just like exotic armor, just random but most exotic weapons can only be acquired via quest. My best advice for finding out whether an exotic weapon is a random drop or via a quest is to just hit up Google or YouTube. You'll find your answer within just a few seconds. The other way to acquire exotic weapons is via the Monument to Lost Lights in the tower next to your vault. These are exotics that were previously tied to quests, but the quest has since been removed from the game. 
and all you have to do now to acquire it is to trade some materials for it. It's just that simple. Now, the final thing you should know about acquiring exotics is that there is actually a vendor that only sells exotics in exchange for legendary shards. This vendor is known as Zer. Zer comes into the game every Friday at reset and leaves the following Tuesday. Zer will appear on a random planet or in the tower and you will need to go find him. You will be selling one exotic piece of armor per class, one exotic weapon, and an exotic engram which guarantees an exotic you do not yet own. Now with all that being said, let me go ahead and say right now that just because something is an exotic, that does not make it good. As there are plenty of exotic weapons and armor that just straight up suck. So just a heads up. Now, before I get into the final tip, I got a quick little bonus for you all. One of the questions I get asked a lot is what are God rolls? So I thought I'd answer it and give you all a tip on how to obtain more of them. In Destiny 2, every legendary weapon you get, excluding a handful of them, have random rolls. A God roll is a combination of meta perks or just really good perks that synergize extremely well together to create what's known as a God roll. For example, you have a weapon that has a perk that increases your damage after you kill something and then reload. And that weapon also has a perk that speeds up your reload after you kill something. You see how those two perks would work extremely well together? That's basically what a God roll is. Now, a great way to get God rolls is by drinking G Fuel. Yes, I'm 100% I'm, I'm serious. And right now at the time of this video going live, Code MyFi will get you 30% off your entire purchase. G Fuel is clinically proven to help new players or just players in general get more God rolls. And no, this statement has not been evaluated by any doctors or scientists, okay? Just trust me and pick some up. I preach, because I'm all about saving you money, that the starter pack is the best thing to pick up if you've never tried G Fuel, because it's seven flavors and a shaker for around $10 if you use my code right now. You literally can't get that anywhere else. Okay, also, I love every single one of you that uses my code, okay, on with the video. Now, the final thing I wanna touch on is, don't get overwhelmed or feel like you need to do everything right away, okay? Destiny 2 is a big game with a lot of things to do if you're a new player. And when you first get the game, it seems like there's so much to do that you don't even know where to start. Start with the story and that should get you leveled up to the soft cap. Once you're done with that, focus on getting to the hard cap by doing your powerfuls while also doing bounties and side activities along with special quests. Once you're at the hard cap, you can then start getting into in-game content like raids, high-level nightfalls, legendary lost sectors, learning builds, and farming god rolls. Just take your time and have fun. Bungie recently said that all content within a year will now be available all year long. So if you can't play for a few weeks, don't sweat it. Nothing's going away. It'll be there for you to do all year. Okay, so with all that being said, if you're looking for people to play with, then I do have a community Discord you can join. We have players from all over the world on all different platforms that would love to party up and play. Also, if you would like to hop into my live streams where I stream mainly Destiny 2 and maybe ask some questions, then by all means. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then feel free to subscribe as I post strictly Destiny 2 videos to help you all out. If you want to share this video with your friends that might be starting Destiny, then I'd highly appreciate it. Drop a like if you want to see more videos like this, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.